Hello from Anna Gladish. Today, potatoes. We're going to turn them into Hasselback potatoes, which means we're going to slice them really thin, we're going to season them, we're going to bake them in the oven, and all the edges will get really crispy. It's a really elegant but easy way to make a potato side dish. Um, sort of that Hasselback idea gets traced all the way back to a restaurant in Sweden called Hasselbacken, um, somewhere in the 50s. It's a real loose uh, connection to the history of a Hasselback when you try to look it up and study it. Um, but that's the connection that uh, most people uh, attribute it to. The idea of taking something dense like a potato, slicing it really thinly without cutting through the bottom, um, it, you can apply this to anything. I've seen Hasselback butternut squash, or Hasselback eggplant, or sweet potatoes, so anything nice and dense with some girth to it, um, you can do what we're going to do and then make it an, into a great side dish or a, with an eggplant and uh, then cook it and maybe put some marinara over it and some Parmesan cheese. You've got a great vegetarian uh, entree as well. So let's start with showing you how to Hasselback these potatoes. Here's everything I'm going to use to season my version of Hasselback potatoes. I've got uh, pepper, I've got seasoned salt. I like always seasoned salt, but you can be plain if you want or any other variety of salt. A little olive oil. I've got some onion powder, some garlic powder, and some fresh rosemary. And then we're gonna finish it when they're done in the oven with just a little bit of butter to add a little bit of richness. You can season them any way you want. You wanna add some paprika, you wanna add some spice. Use your imagination. Ranch powder is a great thing to just sprinkle on all of this uh, with the olive oil. Um, lots of fun ways you can season your potatoes. We've got everything measured out, ready to go. We use the butter at the end, as I said. We're just gonna drizzle about four, a tablespoon of olive oil for each one. I've got these two handy sticks. Chopsticks work, work also very well, but Shelly built me these. Because when you put a potato on there like that, you won't cut all the way through, except on the ends, you have to be careful. But once you get to the middle, these blocks will stop you from cutting. And we'll show you that in the overhead camera. So I've set my potato on the cutting board and the two boards right next to it. Careful with the one end, it might be shorter than that. But after you get going, you can hear it hit the cutting board. I'm just gonna cut it about that thick, all the way through till I get to the other end. And then I wanna watch that again. Cut all four potatoes and then we'll season them and bake them. Sometimes it's easy to just turn the potato around and start again. See, got a beautiful potato, all cut, but all still held together by the bottom. That's how you hassle back something. Tried to get a little bit of seasoning in all the cracks, make sure they're well seasoned, they're ready for the oven. All right, it's almost dinner time now. So we've got our beautiful potatoes out of the oven, ready to go on a plate with just about any kind of protein you can think of. I love it with a great roast beef or a grilled steak. Um, sort of fancy and fun, um, and they still stay together. Just like that. All nice and tender and cooked though. We're gonna put just a little pat of butter on each one of them. And then that'll melt in there, it'll be really nice. And then we'll keep these on a plate and have some dinner. Thanks for tuning in to Cooking at Nanook Lunch, and we'll check you out next week. <laughs>